Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Remember Who You Are show. Uh, this is the third episode, which is part of a mini series within the show, in which my guest and I are discussing Dr. David Hawkins's map of consciousness. He details this in his book, Power Versus Force. You get to meet the guest and listen to the conversation right after this introduction. The prime directive for every human is to know thyself, which is not a discovery, it's a remembering. And that's the goal for this show, to help you remember who you are. I am your host, Roland Achenjang. Indeed, I am Roland, and with me today is my good friend, mentor, he goes by The Energy Doctor, host of the Quantum Effect on Gaia, Randy Weinheimer. Randy, welcome. How are you? Hey, hey. I'm great. It's <laughs> nice. Yeah. We just, uh, we just had an interesting experience there trying to record this conversation, uh, yeah. Yeah. which is part of life anyway, I guess. <laughs> Retakes. And that's, yeah. yeah, retakes, redo. You get to redo. How about that? You know? That's true. Uh, I, I think we should do outtakes about our conversation before. but <laughs> Like a blooper reel <laughs> right at the yeah. end? <laughs> we oh, should. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, being human and, uh, you know, and having fun. And uh, I, I love both of those. So well, Yeah. Uh, what That's a... Uh, that's a good tip. So if you're watching this, watch all the way to the end right. where you get to see some of the bloopers. <laughs> Neat. That would be um, funny. Yeah. Well, welcome back, Randy. You know, like I said, mini series. This is part three of our conversation on Dave, Dr. David Hawkins's map of consciousness. Um, we ended the last one at uh, level 200, talking about courage. But uh, before we move on to neutrality, there are a couple of housekeeping items. So we premiered the first episode. Uh, we had some really uh, fun guests watching live and asking questions, uh, which I think is only right for you to address mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, at this point in time. And the first one had to do with your event later this year, December 10th, 2022 in Sedona. And whether you're going to record that and and have it live if you've decided that yet or where you are in that process well uh yes uh <clears throat> december 10th uh uh in the afternoon at uh sedona creative life center creative life center sedona arizona um i'll be doing a a, a lecture show something or other discussion on power versus force revisited and what that means is in uh, 2000, 2001, I went to the first lecture David gave on uh, power versus force. And uh, subsequently went to about 58 other lectures over the next eight years. And so I, I thought I would uh, introduce uh, the past 20 years as far as what that did or how I got there, what it meant and, and kind of like where it's going. And, and that's the thing about this conversation. A lot of people around the world have read that book, several million. And it, it, it's something David and I talked about where, you know, this thing has applications. It has applications in your life. Uh, it has applications in business and, um, and uh, he and I talked about the fact that people weren't utilizing it. And so it, it's kind of like the friend you mentioned earlier. You may have knowledge, but you're not uh, uh, using it to your benefit, we'll say, or benefit of society or family. And uh, there's definitely knowledge here that could be utilized. Uh, one of the things I came up with is uh, the idea of integration uh, synchronization and congruency. And, and that applies to knowledge and like how you do things and how you move forward and what you accomplish. And so out of power versus force, when I first started 27 years ago, that's what I've came up with. 
<clears throat> is a way to utilize uh, the information that David presents, not just in Power Versus Force, but 14 other books as well. And so uh, that lecture or talk will be, uh, I'll record it. Uh, that's the current plans and, and plan to offer it. Um, uh, because it's, I know it's expensive for people to travel and everything. So, but, uh, if, if you're in the area or want to show up, uh, it's just going to be an afternoon and, uh, we'll have a good time. I, so. yeah, no, I, I wish I can be there. Um, I don't want to reveal too much, but let's just say, I wish I could be there. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I'll do yeah. what I can to make yeah. sure I am there. Yeah. Um, speaking of the 14 books that Dr. David Hawkins wrote while he was here on the planet with us, one of the questions that actually came up was um, if you had a preferred uh, sequence, basically, of, of which book to read when. Read them as he issued them. Uh, so he would be doing the lectures and go, oh, by the way, uh, there's a new book out. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, I, I, the I, and transcending conscious i mean just go on course you read it several times and uh and then a lot of people probably need to go ahead and jump to like how do you uh, uh, uh heal yourself healing and transcendence i think is the name of it but um the one that i like is uh uh truth versus falsehood right Okay. And and the reason is if we introduce the concept of uh, kinesiology, uh, the ability to test for the truth, then if you wear yourself out testing for the truth on like truth versus falsehood, it's like three or four hundred pages, and he calibrates every country, every idea, every song. Uh, it's just it's crazy. And, and, of course, when you go through it, you're going to go, oh, no, that calibration can't be correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> why? Because you have you have a built-in prejudice. You have a built-in idea. You're not neutral. And uh, the one I love, though, uh, <clears throat> I have a, I had a client. Uh, they brought her to me. She was dyslexic. And I was able to just change it kind of on the spot. And we say th that it worked, right? Mm -hmm. But... Um, in the process, though, she had never read because it's too painful to her. And um, and afterwards, she, like around me, she carried a book all the time, right? But uh, even at like 14 or 15, she started reading, you know, Power Versus Force and stuff. Uh, so the concepts are valid even at a pretty early age. But uh, one of the things that I would notice is that she would slip below 200 on consciousness sometimes. And I'd say, what music are you listening to? And uh, like we were talking about sound prior to the, the talk here. Yeah. And so I said, just tell me the songs or bands you're listening to. And I go, 180, 100, 120, 150. And, and she would just like go crazy because she liked that music. And I said, I didn't disagree with the fact that you liked it i just saying that it's an under 200 vibration mm -hmm. now when she stopped listening to the under 200 she'd ask me well does this calibrate over 200 and i'd go yes no yes no uh it, she changed it changed her personality uh, uh frustration anxiety things like that sort of kind of disappeared and so we don't think about music like that uh, translating into uh, a vibratory effect on the body, but it's there. So I recently have, have another client, a male in his 50s, and he listens to nothing but like 20, 50 techno, and not nothing against any of the music. It's just that if its vibration is under 200, it's not necessarily beneficial to you, right? Mm -hmm. It is beneficial in the aspect that may be distracting from what's going on in reality, okay? And, and at that point, maybe you need to listen to, you know, metal bands or, I don't know, folk music, something, right? Mm -hmm. But the music has a lot to teach us about calibration because we can decide or understand how we feel after listening to it, okay? Mm -hmm. And 
<clears throat> one of the things I teach, all these levels of consciousness can be taught with uh, basically country and Western music, uh, Motown, <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> and people think I'm crazy, but uh, uh, Patsy Cline. Uh, anyway, it's like there's all these references because they give it to you in a three minute soundbite. And if you pay attention to it, you can get the message, even if it's delivered in an under 200 way, we would call it. Right? Yeah. If you listen so, between the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Just write them down and look at them. I mean, yeah. as we go along, I'll throw a bunch of them in just for entertainment on my part. And so, but anyway, so there you go. You have sound coming at you um, and, and it vibrates you and it sets up a resonance pattern. And then you're either depressed or anxious or happy or something. Well, all you got to do is pay attention to it. That's a, a viable way to advance your own consciousness, right? Through music. Yeah. And then yeah. here we go through art, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so so uh, I hope that answers the question, right? <laughs> I, I think uh, it does. I, yeah. I guess I even forgot what question I asked. <laughs> well, like how do you progress? Uh, power oh, versus force. How do you progress the, through the different? I, I, I the see. way I teach is read Power versus Force and then read Letting Go, the last book he wrote. Mm -hmm. And then from those two, I go to uh, Truth versus Falsehood because I want to be able to practice and understand kind of like where those calibrations come from and see see what I can come up with. So it, it's, it's kind of like a Truth versus Falsehood becomes a practice book at the back of the text. All right. So, yeah. All right. And then work your way to the rest of them, right? Yeah. Oh, so letting go is actually a big deal. And that's worth, yeah. I think that's worth another mini series in the future. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I, I have yeah. lots of stories of people I've given that book to. And then, uh, you know, when I do consultations with them, uh, we see what we're letting go of and, and what the outcome on the other side is. And, yeah. uh, and it's really fascinating because... The shift in consciousness presents a different, uh, uh, I call it landscape. Uh, it's kind of like you're looking out one window and you see, you know, desert and you look out the other one, and you see, you know, the uh, nice, you know, vernant Beach. land, trees and everything. Yeah. Uh, so uh, letting go is literally getting back to a point where you can choose which window you look at or look forward. Right. So. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I don't mean to go down that rabbit hole, but if I can liken it to your teachings um, in, in martial arts, right? It's that beginning right. where you're balanced and, and then you can pick. Um, one last housekeeping item before we move on to neutrality has to do with a question that was asked uh, during the premiere of part one of our mm -hmm. mini series, Power Versus Force, you know, um, is... When you are working with somebody who gives you their name, um, how are you able to um, find out information about them if they somehow changed their names? Uh, okay. Um, I don't know. About 15 years ago, I had a lady walk in in her mid-30s. And um, <clears throat> I always start out by saying your name. It's an identity. It's a internet address only it's a field address so that's the progression okay you 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 write your name down that's your name um it's an assignment and so if we get into the esoteric right the assignment of a name and then you can get into all kinds of like uh, uh etymology and where the name came from and what it means and all that but uh the reason I, I use it is it's an absolute, okay? So even if it's given to you, it becomes an absolute through repetition. So there we go with uh, uh, the idea of affirmations and stuff, okay? So the lady sits down and goes, my name is Monica, and I go, that's absolutely not true. <laughs> so, <laughs> and she just stared at me for a second, and she goes, when I was five years old, I told everybody I wanted to be called Monica. Uh, my name is like Sarah, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, I believe you, but your name's still not Monica. And she goes, everybody in my life since five years old has called me that. I said, you're still not Monica, right? So 
one of the things that happens is if I write down, uh, say, Monica and write down Sarah, we would like them to be equal because everybody has nicknames, okay? Um, you know, uh, Native Americans change their names several times in their lifetime. It's not unusual okay, to be named one thing and then uh, you have experiences and it changes and we could look at it as titles. We go from being, uh, the progression is I'm a son or a daughter and then I'm a cousin and I'm an aunt and an uncle and a brother and a mom and a dad. And you think about all the name changes that go on. So the name becomes an absolute we can test for the truth. Okay. So when somebody says their name, then that's an absolute truth that I'm going to measure against. And I want it to be true. I don't want you to have a nickname. And I want, if you have a nickname, that I can call you either one equally. But what happens is you can accumulate a whole lot of information under one name. And then if you change your name, not necessarily does all that information transfer over. It's kind of like a hidden file, okay? Especially if you're trying to block out negative events or experiences you've had in life. So a lot of people change their name for that reason. <clears throat> but it doesn't change the data or the information. So when you get married and you change your name, you generally change your last name. You don't change your first name. So that's why everybody I talk to, I say, I just need first name. And uh, so then if I have your first name, I can uh, go to a field address and you have all the information in your own electromagnetic field. So all your memory is layered out there. About uh, 26 layers is what I use. And we can go back into those layers and say the first layer is one year old and five years, you just work your way up, right? And one of the interesting things about that is when you, uh, when you die, uh, supposedly your soul goes through all those layers as it exits the body. And what do we call that? You're remembering your entire lifetime. So in Alzheimer's and other disease, memory diseases, you uh, start to lose some of those memory fields. It doesn't mean they disappear. That information is still there, whether you're alive or dead. And so when I do consulting on films and stuff, like, well, let's just ask dear old Abe Lincoln or whoever or Napoleon what they were thinking <laughs> because that information set is still available still out there in the field and that's what it throws people because if if you know somebody's name then I'm gonna what I call go through you to that connection acquire that name acquire that field data and then here we go what do you want to know <laughs> so, so as far as far as accessing information for people who were <clears throat> here, right? This this gets really, really deep in yeah. the weeds with this, but what happens with multiple timelines? Yeah, oh. Especially with things like the Mandela effect where people are like, huh, he died yeah. in, in jail or something. Right. Um, what happens is the, the data density, information density changes, Okay. It, it's it's the, the idea of the the identity going along a timeline, and 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 I have <clears throat> excuse me, I have a series I want to start called X timelines that I'll bring out sometime, and it deals with this is the fact that as soon as I switch directions, like in our timeline, uh, the the ongoing uh, momentum. I teach that, I remember martial arts and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, awareness, uh, balance, moment, momentum. It keeps going, but it dissipates as it goes forward. So that timeline collapses is what we call it. Okay. And, and, and it, it's in the concept of quantum collapse at every given moment, every timeline collapses, right? And then the same timeline opens up, uh, it, but it's been modified just a little bit by external forces. We'll say, or internal for that same point, how much energy you have. So all this is going on all at the same time. Uh, it, it becomes uh, a matter of like tracking it forward. And as soon as you track something forward, you get into multiple timelines. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, backwards was only one timeline. <laughs> so so 
Uh, this is actually where I'm at in all my research, is uh, exploring how the deviations occur and uh, how you maintain consciousness and maintain the self as you transition through these. Uh, think about your your who you are, and then you get married, and then you're not who you are, and then you get divorced, and now you're who you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, yeah. We call that a, a rotation, kind of like the plane takes off and the plane lands. If it lands, we call that a successful rotation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you can think yeah. about that in relation to marriage. Um, so anyway, that that describes what goes on like I acquire that data point, your name, and that data point opens up the field of information, your entire energy field. I tell people I'm not psychic, at least in that regard. All I'm doing is what I call field testing. I'm literally doing kinesiology on your information field to determine what's true and what's not. And so <clears throat> uh, one of the ones like um, I had a practice for 14 years to uh, where I work mostly on women and children, pregnancy, neonatal, prenatal, all that. And women just sit down, and I said, how many pregnancies? And they'd go, well, I have one or two. And I go, no, you had three or four or five, whatever. And they'd look at me, and they go, that's true. And I go, yeah, I was just testing the truth of that information. Okay, so, and, and the reason I ask that question is we want to be done with all uh, pregnancies. And uh, it gets into uh, Chinese medicine, uh, 10 months, 10 days to be pregnant, 10 months, 10 days to be unpregnant. And I'm the only one I know that teaches people to be unpregnant. So you know, see how this all gets like wound up into even just one simple question. So I hate to keep going on and on. But I know. We're, we're like, I, a, but, but, it, but it's it's valuable. And I actually had a follow-up yeah. that I think, um, oh, yeah. as my lighting is messing up here, but yeah. I actually had a follow-up that I think is uh, is worth asking at this point. I mean, if I were watching us talk right now, I would say, oh, you should ask this, Roland. And, yeah. and it has to do with the kinesiology testing, the way you yeah. do it, where you do the field test and, and you know, you're not like I do is oh, right. testing the strength of my hand or my finger trying to hold this position here. Um, how are you, and you may not want to diverge this, but how are you testing? Is it a feeling? Do you feel energy moving through your body? Like what's a, what's a yeah. no versus a yes? What's a zero versus a one for Randy? Okay. Everybody practices kinesiology. They just don't know they're doing it. So everybody practices. What we do is anything you're doing, what we call non-consciously, you bring in the consciousness to be able to explore it. You drag it out of the unconscious or the subconscious. So everybody that's a chef, everybody that's a cook, everybody that's an artist, everybody that's a musician is basically doing kinesiology about what sounds right or what feels right or what tastes right. And if you take like a, a, a cooking, uh, I, I've owned restaurants and been in restaurants. And um, <clears throat> how do you put the food together? what ingredients it's like now we're dealing with the infinite field of consciousness and you drag out what parts that work for you and and i tell the story about my uh, my mother uh, uh, i moved to california one day and i said mom i want to make this strawberry pie you make strawberry cream pie and i said so i got my pen and paper out and i said okay how do you start she goes well you put some milk <laughs> classic oh how much and she goes well you put you know the amount of, you know you put some that and then you then you take some strawberries how many strawberries well and then you know a little bit of sugar and you know and i'm like and at the end i wrote down zero right there there's no number right now on the technical side i like numbers i really like numbers but there was no way there's no way to duplicate what she did but I, even I could stand there and watch her, and I still couldn't duplicate it, okay? Mm -hmm. So she intuitively or kinesiologically was putting the right amount of stuff into the recipe, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the musician's putting the right amount of notes, and the artist's putting the right amount of brush strokes. So this whole concept that kinesiology is something weird is not true. 
when you, when even children, you look at somebody, you lean forward if you like them and lean back if you don't. That's kinesiology, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, the idea of uh, opening your arms to some form of beauty or somebody you like, and then closing them up and crossing your arms is like a rejection of that. Now, to ask you what I do is uh, the the muscle testing, thumb testing, all that was too slow for me. The the mechanical response in the body to transmit the energy and nerves and synapses is way too slow as far as I'm concerned. So. When I work on a person, I, I ask about a thousand questions. I have a, a protocol I go through. Same thing on businesses, and uh, basically they're identical. <clears throat> but um, it's like I, I I found a way to uh, pick up that information really fast, and it's what I call a feel state. All right. Uh, ever notice the temperature shift, like in the fall or winter or something? Mm -hmm. There's this sensation of uh, something changed. So I approached that ideal and came up with a more or less instantaneous uh, knowingness of positive or negative, true or false. And so, mm -hmm. so I have that sense. And uh, uh, I, I, I learned it in martial arts as part of what we call proximity training. You have to know if something's going to touch you, right? Uh, back to knife fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it'll teach you a lot of this, right? <laughs> I don't recommend it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely don't recommend it. Uh, so uh, the, the idea being you have some knowledge that's out ahead of uh, the current moment. And, and we all do. But I can get way out there on the timeline. So... And I can get way, way back there on the timeline. So, so your entire timeline is available. Basically, anybody can do what I do, right? Uh, so, so that's where we go. There are no secrets. Uh, that's why I laugh at when I would do some of those shows on cosmic disclosure and stuff. Uh, none of that was scripted. They just asked me a question, and and they'd go, "How do you know all that?" Even even my girlfriend. How do you know all that? And I go, well, the information's available. All you have to do is tap into it. Mm -hmm. And so, so that should make the Chinese, Russians, and Americans uh, really nervous. <laughs> or calm down. <laughs> yeah, because, because they think they have things hidden, and it's not true. It's, it, all the information's in the field. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, you know, some of the people I've trained, uh, they're able to access it too. You can know the answer to damn near anything. Uh, some some of it is sort of restricted. Uh, you can watch David and some of his Hawkins and some of his videos, and they'll say that information is not available, right? Yeah, yeah. And and what it means that it's not available to be shared. And so when I work on a person, I don't tell them everything I find. You know, some of that's private and uh, shouldn't be discussed. And uh, and yet some of it, if it's a negative, really needs to be gotten rid of. OK, mm -hmm. you don't need all the memories you've accumulated. There you go. All right. You Absolutely. don't need all the experiences. And <clears throat> by negating the energy in that memory, all memory has energy. And all memory is mutable. And those two facts give us a lot of range to improve the human condition, uh, to improve human life. And uh, that's what I work on. So Neat. Now, thanks for sharing. And you summarized yeah. really the two big things I was going to say at the end, right? Which was that this skill or ability is not something that's just unique to Randy. Uh, you can no. modify yeah. it how you want. And uh, of right. course, it, it does take time and practice, right? To continue to develop yeah. that. Uh, yeah. And so with that, holy wow. Let's talk yeah. about, <laughs> let's talk let's about. Go, go back on topic. <laughs> yeah, let's go back. To, but this is all fascinating. I love it. Uh, 250, neutrality, right? On Dr. David yeah. Hawkins's map of consciousness here. And um, yeah, Randy, what can you tell us about neutrality? If you can be neutral, you can't calibrate. It's uh, your, your prejudice towards a certain outcome. And, and we call that a trap in the, um, the idea of doing kinesiology. It's, uh, at some point, you're going to want to be right. And, of course, uh, 
the current state of politics in uh, the world is uh, people want to be right. Nobody wants to be truthful. And, and I'm sure there's a country and Western song somewhere, if I could just remember. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what, uh, what, uh, if 11 years wrong, I don't want to be right. That's the uh, current state of politics in the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so being right is a, a normal condition, it, it's, it, but it's also an outcome of weakness. So... So strength comes from the truth, we could say. Uh, the basic exercise, real simple, is uh, you pull up to a stoplight or if you have a phone or anything, like with a stoplight, how many seconds before the light changes, okay? Mm-hmm. And it just pull the number out of the field because it doesn't exist within you uh, at a certain level. It's in the field. That answer is available. And uh, I have a lot of fun with people because I... I I can spit out the correct and truthful answer. <laughs> so, and then uh, how long before your phone rings? You see what I mean? You just, and the point is to write it down or to say it out loud. So then you can count it down and see. So what happens, you start being knowing of things that are kind of like coming along towards you. Right. We're back mm-hmm. to that. Yeah. And uh, so very simple practice, same thing you practice it. And when you're wrong, you were trying to be right. Uh, that's that song I just talked about. Um, <laughs> yeah. So when you're truthful, you're just truthful. There's there's no, uh, at a certain level, no positive or negative to it. So that's being neutral. And one of the things that I think is one of the greatest things, uh, detriments that we don't teach in school, we teach positive and negative. Don't be negative, right? Why are you so positive? It's said in a negative way. And Positive, negative, positive, negative. You look at three prongs on an electrical uh, uh, cord. Positive, negative, and neutral, right? Mm-hmm. How come we don't teach neutral? I, so, I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know why we don't. So, so think about this. Uh, it's going to rain tomorrow. Uh, okay, <laughs> <you know>? cool. <laughs> Fine and dead. So, okay, yeah, that's neutral, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so positive, negative, neutral, Uh and, uh, and, of course, uh, David taught a very important lesson. Uh, I just taught it to another client uh, in regards to an ex-boyfriend. Uh, so what, then what, now what? Everybody write that down. That is an attempt to approach neutrality. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and if you can be neutral, you have the greatest range of choice. Okay. And also, if you can be neutral, you basically eliminate judgment. And that's a tremendous step in consciousness, okay? Um, uh, my career path was I wanted to be a, a what do you call it, a, a fashion consultant. <laughs> and what that means is like, oh, my God, you see what that person's wearing, right? That's a judgment, right? Yeah, you wanted to and be I an go, E? No, 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 I'm not being judgmental. I'm just being observational. So, yeah. <laughs> so being observational and being neutral in kinesiology all tied together at 250, okay? And non-judgment. So there you go. And, yeah. And that's how you play. That's how you practice. And that's how you evolve from there forward, okay? So. Mm-hmm. No, that's great. I, 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 I absolutely love neutrality. This was what I remembered consciousness or what people go, the one infinite creator, God, to be about its entire creation. If not, it would not evolve and grow as infinitely and as efficiently, if you will, the way it is. If God had passed judgment on so many things, it would limit its own ability to grow, right? Tremendously. Um and so I really, really like neutrality. And if you read my book, I think it's chapter 10, You Can Do No Wrong. And right. that chapter has gotten me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. but uh, yeah. it, uh, it, this was one of the influences behind that chapter is, is neutrality and, and not being attached to outcomes um, or life's ups and downs mm-hmm. and being open and just responding to what you read you uh, experience in a way. Yeah, the, you, neutrality is unique and it gives you the ability to assume a zero position in relation to reality. Okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, the other thing uh, Dr. Hawkins mentioned was um, the concept of quantum collapse, is that the universe moves from perfection to perfection. Uh, it doesn't move from imperfection. In, in other words, uh, uh, I can't remember what lecture, but I was chatting with him and uh, he said, why do you think you need to save the world? Yeah. <laughs> so I have, and, that's interesting, Randy, because yeah. I have a, I have a, a social media post quote that I, I want to post, which is, if you think you're trying to make anything better, you just need to meditate. Like you, yeah, you, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I find it interesting. Like all spiritual teachers, somebody's going to find something wrong with them. You know, here we go with the judgment and the negativity. I don't care if if somebody tells me something beneficial to me. I do not care who they are, where they came from, what they did, or because the information is valuable to me. And, and one of the things that Dr. Hawkins, when he said that, like the world moves from perfection to perfection, why do you think you need to save the world? And he looks at me, and I'm like, thank you. I can lay down that burden of trying to fix my family, the universe, the dog, the cat, whatever. Now, I dropped it, but I picked it back up on individuals, right? Is that their attempt to perfect their world I was going to help them with, and that's what I basically try to do, right? And uh, so <clears throat> in quantum collapse, we say all information and all energies collapse into a moment. And so <clears throat> it's kind of like that song YMCA, right? It, <laughs> it opens up. Every yeah. moment it opens up, every moment it collapses. So we say your ability to be somewhere else or be somebody else or do something else it collapses in every given moment, but in the next moment, it, it opens back up. And so I tell people, when you walk in a, in a in your house, all the outside world collapse. When you walk out of your house, it collapses. The inside world is. The inside world collapse, yeah. When you're in a relationship, when you enter the relationship, all potential's there. And when you exit the relationship, all potential's somewhere else. Yeah. Right? And yeah. then it's like, why all the anger and, and fear and everything, right? It's like you've been given an opportunity to enter a relationship. You've been given an opportunity to exit a relationship. They're both equal. Mm -hmm. But if mm -hmm. you're not neutral, oh, my goodness. And they're not. <laughs> um, yeah. And so two things, Randy. One, yeah. in, in relation to you or anybody wishing that they can make anything better by um, changing something, right? Where... Mm -hmm. If you're not coming from a space of neutrality, where you really think something needs to be better, or something needs to be right. made perfect, it makes me want to ask you, you must not trust your creator's ability to pay attention to what is created, right? Like, like you always make the comment, now, I didn't create the universe, but if I did, you know what I mean? But I've, I've always said that where people are like, oh, I want peace in the world. And I'm like, well, you're looking in the wrong place for one, because there has always right. been peace throughout the world. Right. And then yeah. too, I'm like, if you really do want to fix the world, you, you are telling me that the, if you do believe in a creator, he is dropping the ball and you can do, or she, and you can do exactly. a better job, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, but on the other side, on the other hand, um, as far as you picking back up that, that burden or that baton to help people perfect their own world, I want to right. ask your opinion on this, which is what I'm dealing with is you are you helping people who are coming to you already haven't decided that they need help or are you like f trying to um push this help onto people who are oh, no, no. oblivious yeah. to it no uh no because it's like uh it's too much and and not only that if you ever get to neutral and, and it's, start to up that chart, you can't ever go back. So it, 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 in, it, in, it engenders the sense of uh, a loss, the loss of the old self. Uh, transitioning through every level of consciousness will pr produce a sense of loss, okay? It's kind of like uh, Donna Summers, she worked hard for the money. <laughs> you worked hard 
you worked hard to be this way, okay? And, and the answer is no, I do not push on all this. Uh, I've had people go, well, I want my child to, to come see you. And I go, tell them to call and make an appointment. And they're going like, well, they're only five years old. And I said, hand them the phone, tell them to call me and make an appointment. Because what they're doing is giving their uh, acquiescence. They're giving their permission to be able to uh, uh, engage this information, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I tell a short story. My uh, daughter one day said, I want to learn this. And I took her to, she's about 13, and I took her to see Dr. Hawkins, and that was memorable. But <laughs> uh, they um, proceeded to get into a quite intense conversation. So, uh, because she's that way. Anyway, she asked me to teach her all this, and I said, no. I said, shoot yourself in the head. It, it will be less painful. Okay? Yeah. And remember that the, the pain of transcending each of these levels of consciousness is reoccurring. <laughs> right? And and there's language for it called dark night of the soul and mm-hmm. all this stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. If you've ever divorced or anything, you, you lost a job, you call into question your entire existence. And 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 the answer is no. Uh, you are still Roland. I'm still Randy, right? Mm-hmm. It's just that that world collapsed. The quantum collapse, it collapsed to zero. And what that means is like, woohoo, I get to go again. Over. I, get yeah. to, I get to see something new. Yeah. So so no, I don't I don't I tell people you shouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. It, it, it's uh bliss is uh not knowing. That's a that's a definition of bliss. And, and I I love it because they place it up in the seven, eight hundreds in consciousness, right? <laughs> yeah. so, um, ignorance right ready oh ignorance is please um but you know everything you just said is in alignment with with things i tell folks as well i say hey when you if you're looking at maslow's hierarchy of need for instance and you look at self-realization on the top okay. i go that's right. ongoing you're always self-realizing yes, in one yeah. area of your life you know yeah. um but uh but yeah no look at that we that's neutrality we're well, forty-five minutes in. <laughs> well, well, it's 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 a pivot point, okay? Yeah, yeah. and uh, and and it's important that you understand because it's the basis for everything from the kinesiology to the even mm-hmm. the concept of uh, like in timelines moving forward or backwards, right? Uh, all of it is inherent, and and I think David said that if you look on the chart. Uh, uh, neutrality becomes sort of the break breakout point. It is. Right? And yeah. he also talked about from here, people who are um, able to operate at least from this level of consciousness are very hard to control because they aren't right. really attached to any outcomes. They're, they're, right. They seem to be able to, I guess the word would be recover from life's challenges, right? right. They're, they're quote unquote, able to go with the flow and so on. They don't get too right. excited or too sad about certain things. So, yeah, yeah, it, it's like the light changes in fourteen seconds instead of thirteen or ten. First of all, you'll start having an emotional response, and that tells you you're not neutral. Mm-hmm. And instead of going, "Huh, that's interesting," uh, I didn't call that one correctly, or whatever you want to call it. So it is very much a training exercise. Right? Yeah, and uh, when it truly comes into effect, I, I tell people. Uh, somebody says they love you and you go, yes, you do. And somebody says they don't love you and you go, yes, you don't. Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah. Right. Yes, you do not love me. Yeah. 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 Uh, so. And then see how they react, right? I said, I yeah. love you. You're supposed to say you love me back. <laughs> right. Now, that, that, that's a different thing. One of my teachers, I, I want to explain that. One of my teachers one time said, everything you say comes back to you within seven years. And and I, I opened my eyes and kind of set up straight and went, huh, let me look at that. And, uh, of course, uh, politicians don't want to hear this. So, <laughs> but anyway, so I said, okay, I can deal with this. So I started telling everybody I met, I didn't care who they were. I love you, right? And, and what I'm stating is I'm being in a loving state. It has nothing to do with the object, right? 
that's the other thing of neutrality. It has nothing to do with a stoplight. <laughs> so, so, or the wife or the husband, whatever. So I would tell people, I'd be driving down the street and I'd look over somebody be in the car next to me and I'd go, I love you. And what was funny is after about five or six years, people would come up to me and go, I love you. Just people are saying that even today, and, Randy. Huh? People are saying that even today. Look at the comments on our conversations. I love Randy yeah. Weinheimer. He's helping me a lot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So when I uh, met my girlfriend, she goes, who's that woman? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just as an example, if I had a girlfriend or whatever. But anyway, she uh, she's like, why did she say I love you? And I go, well, I did this meditation for the last seven years. So people think one minute, five minutes. And I tell everybody and everybody tells me, right? It's the mm-hmm. universe responding to me being loving. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so every level of consciousness, remember, the universe is responding to you being at that level of consciousness, right? That's all. So so I love you. You love me. Here we go, right? I'm being in a loving state. There's no object. And, and once we take the object out of all equations, now we have a state of consciousness and we can examine where we are, okay? Yes, sir. Now, that all was right. great. A lot of insight there. And yeah. uh, we'll, we'll take advantage of the time left uh, and go yeah. to level 310, which is the level of willingness. Of what? Willingness. Ah, uh, I teach five martial arts. Uh, the, I teach 10. It's called 10 Sons. It's a program I put special forces people through and some others. Um, first martial arts, uh, awareness. Second martial art is uh, balance. Third one is uh, moment. Uh, timing under heaven. Um, the then uh, mo- movement and then momentum. I normally don't teach six through ten unless it's somebody I would take on as a student or somebody I work with really intensely, like in business. And uh, willingness is number six. Only we call it the the application of the will. This is the sixth martial art. I've never taught that openly, by the way. So there you go. So 310, uh, uh, willingness is really what uh, becomes when you become a mover in your own universe, let alone a mover in the whole universe. And uh, it's true for people. It's true for businesses. It's uh, it, it's something I work on on businesses a lot. So there. So, yeah, it's a very powerful thing to apply yourself. But if you're, and this is what I work on, if you're not 100% yourself and don't have, here we go, 100% of yourself available and have the proper amount of energy, then willing, willfulness becomes uh, weak. Like you, you want to, it's our reset people for four or five things like that so that when they hit willingness, they're able to execute, they're able to move forward, they're able to express themselves, they're able to uh, create. And, uh, and literally create is the one I use to describe what happens. Okay. Yeah. Um, this, you're right. This is very big with businesses, mm-hmm. right? Once you get to that level, you're experiencing rapid growth. You're able to self-correct, um, right. um, analyze a lot of, you know, the work that you're doing, seeing what's working, what's not working. And right. not in a judgmental way, it's, I mean, you should have that neutrality already at this point, right? So you're oh, yeah. you're not yeah. forcing to sort of give uh, maybe your customers what you think they need. You may be right. more willing to hear, okay, this is what they need and then adjust and yeah. uh, pivot that way. Yeah, yeah um, the field tell you what what they need. One of, one of the things uh, Dave and I discussed one day is he goes, I don't understand what, why people don't, utilize power versus force more. He said, all you have to do is calibrate the level of consciousness of your market. And so most people happenstance their way into that idea. But, and, and, and the second thing is, is you can calibrate the need for that. Uh, what is the market for some idea you have? Okay. Uh, what is the market for me asking you to go out on a date? <laughs> you, know? uh, you can pull that field information, I promise you. And uh, 
uh, it, be, it becomes pretty funny, really, uh, from my side. So, so anyway, there you go. It's like, you know, why, why wouldn't you apply these things? And well, the, the answer is most people can't calibrate. Most people can't access the field. And so, uh, so when I work on uh, corporations, like they're, uh, or I don't know what that was. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's the universe telling you not to tell us. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> About willingness. So, anyway. So, you know, like with companies and their their uh, uh, personnel, their executive suite, it's it's kind of like, is everybody integrated, everybody congruent, everybody synchronized and heading in the same direction? Mm -hmm. And I promise you that's not true. Mm -hmm. uh, what you find is efficiency uh, running at 2.1 or something or 200 or 205 or something. Uh, very rare to find 240 level uh, efforts in a corporation. Yeah, uh, it. I learned that in business school, and it was a topic we discussed called agency theory. Yes, yes. which is I was, it, for some reason, you know, my entire business school education that was one piece of uh, learning that I thought this is probably the most valuable thing I've I've learned. Exactly agency okay. theory. And I go, this is, this is exactly why there are inefficiencies, there's drama, the politics, uh, yeah. and uh, it's like agency theory. This makes the most, this is what you should be teaching the whole time, right? That's We're me exactly. and my bias, not being neutral. <laughs> Don't teach anything else. Yeah. Um, I, I teach, I teach it as set theory. Uh, and that's my own. It's a, a theory approximate reality. If I ever write that book, <laughs> right. Um, because once you have that knowledge, oh my, you can move really fast. And not only that, uh, like I told one uh, business I helped over a period of about five years, uh, we had about 5,000% growth. And, uh, and, and I, she goes, how does this work? And I said, well, we'll make mistakes, but our mistakes will be very small compared to if we didn't do everything I'm doing working with you. Yeah. And that turned out to be true. Right? It wasn't that we made didn't make mistakes. We made very, very small mistakes compared to other people. And so as a consequence of that, we experienced very rapid growth. Okay. Yeah. This is really random, and I think it would be a nice way to end um, this, this conversation right at 310 and then pick up yeah. with acceptance in the next one. But with Dr. David Hawkins wondering why businesses aren't taking advantage of, you know, um, kinesiology, I wonder, is it possible to create a neutral application that calibrates for you? Something like a magic eight ball, but this would be <laughs> technology, right? Where uh, you, would, you would shake and it would have neutrality built into it and it would just calibrate for you. Is that something that could exist or does it have to be uh, like a uh, biofield influence personal? Well, the the problem becomes is uh, at a certain level, all knowledge is subjective. Okay. And so what is true, uh, and this is something is a big wrestling match goes on is, is the truth universal. Well, a universal truth that or an absolute truth, uh, uh David Hawkins used God is an absolute truth. Okay. Uh, I use your name when I'm working with you as an absolute truth. So, so we can assign uh, positionality in quantum physics to your name or to God or whatever, all right? But it becomes very subjective with each, each company and stuff it, it, and each person, even though there may be a commonality that runs through all of it. And so I don't know at this point, I'd have to think about how do you go from a commonality and, and the subjective to an objective outcome? And that's what you're asking. And, uh, yeah. and, and so I, 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 I'd have to talk about that a long time. <laughs> yeah. But uh -oh. so yeah. with what I know, and I, I, I remember having a very um, intense conversation with my brother about this particular topic. And I, I made, I was, I was trying to think about, the difference between subjectivity and objectivity on the planet. And, and I, I made a similar statement. I said, look, there's really no objective, objective, objective. Like there's really no objectivity. Even 
what we might deem to be objective has a level of subjectivity to it. And it, it was pretty intense, but I feel like since you cannot avoid it after you leave consciousness. So as soon as consciousness becomes of aware of itself and, and the whole I am, we were talking about the word at the beginning, right? As soon as consciousness says I am, subjectivity is already introduced and yes. it's not yeah. going to go away until you return back to, to just being nothing, to basically eliminating who I am is, right? And being all. And so as a business, if we started something like this, we could, we could build that in and say, hey, look, Oh yeah, it's I, I, as uh, objective as it could be. You make your own sure. decision uh, and sort of <laughs> get lawyers involved, and you're done. <laughs> uh, uh, what you're asking is interesting. Uh, like, let's say I'm the eight ball. Um, I had a meeting uh, unexpectedly, uh, kind of like uh, got called to an appointment with a billionaire, certified billionaire, and um, and. Uh, He's like, so kind of like, how's all this work? And I go, well, uh, he had a financial deal going. And I said, well, uh, it was a, what they call a Dutch auction, like whoever has highest bid wins. And I said, well, the competition is going to bid like 120 million, and you know, or uh, it looks like. And if you want the thing, you should probably bid more than that because what's the difference between 120 and 125? They're just numbers, right? And I said, but if you really wanted that, I'd bid around 130. Uh, then we're talking millions of euros, by the way. <laughs> and um, I said, but the most important part, and this is true for all transactions, is you should be satisfied with whatever you did or whatever you offer or whatever you have to offer. Or absolutely be satisfied with it before you do. It's like if you go ask for a date, I should be satisfied that here, I'm Randy offering myself for a date. You see what I mean? And, and that kind of floored him. And I said, I want you to be happy with your uh, offer, uh, whether you get it or not, okay? Not and sure. uh, and he goes, I've never heard that before. And I go, yeah. it's uh, Remember, we go from perfection to perfection. We go from satisfaction to satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> the other guy bid 125.1 uh, one or something, right? And they bid 121. And... Uh, and I said, he goes, you were correct. And I go, yes, I, I was not being correct. I was being truthful. That's a difference. Remember, we're not trying to be correct. We're not trying to, you know, we're just trying to be truthful about it. And, and I was just accessing the field of information he was presenting. I had no idea who he's talking about or what it, right? And, uh, and then the other thing was uh, they'd spent, uh, say, 40 or 50 mil to get in. They were getting three years later, 120 out. It's like they were winners, right? Mm -hmm. you, you win if you win or lose, you win, right? Mm -hmm. And they go, well, we really like that market. And I go, well, go ahead and create another market or go ahead and become the competitor to that market. I go, you're not stuck. And I, his, his eyes got wide. They, they don't think all the way through these things as far as that, that timeline keeps going in whichever direction you want it to, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Whichever direction you're willing to develop and spend energy. Now you have to have energy. We're back to all that work I do. So, <laughs> yeah, the same thing with companies. So, indeed. So, anyway, that's an example of like the field information is available. It's available for any company. Um, uh, we can tell all kinds of things, right? <laughs> so, because that information is available in the field. So, about yeah. you, anybody, or anything. Uh, except some things, you know, like like David says, some information not available, or some information we shouldn't share, because it doesn't benefit the other person to for you to know what they know or know whatever. For yes. me to know or experience, so oh yeah, blah blah blah. So there, <laughs> blah blah blah. So there, yeah. yeah. Look at that, Randy. We are at the end of, you know part three of our mini series. So that, yeah. you know what that means? There's going to be a part yeah. four, maybe even a part oh, yeah. five. Yeah. <laughs> so this, this strikes me as fascinating because I remember when we started talking about recording these series uh, or these episodes and you're like, oh, it's going to take eight hours and something. Yeah. I was like, eight hours? We're just talking. <laughs> yeah. the amount of conscious. And here we are. And I open. I mean, yeah. yeah. And here we are, are three hours in. So it may, yeah. who knows, right? 
And then I feel well, like you were being truthful. Yes. And that's the thing about parent versus force. It literally opens up a universe. It changes your consciousness. It changes mm -hmm. how you approach the universe, how you approach yourself, how you approach life. And there's not many books you can say that about, right? Or mm -hmm. many teachers. So uh, I'm eternally grateful for uh, Dr. Hawkins removing my need to save the universe. <laughs> <laughs> it was like <sighs> great relief. Yeah. But it also gave me an opportunity to other people get to that same point. And and I, I relish that. I enjoy helping other people. So Absolutely. Right. No, Thank we you. appreciate we appreciate you, your insight, uh certainly your humor. I appreciate that a lot. And uh huh. um I mean I I don't mean to be very sentimental, but it's really funny how we connected. Uh because I, I was publishing my book right when you were being featured on, on Gaia and I was watching it thinking, holy crap, I need to talk to Randy. And, and here we are yeah. talking regularly. Um, but for anyone who's still watching, you're right at the end here. Please go ahead and like, subscribe to the channel if you love these conversations. And then uh, as we promised, this is the end. And so just stick a little bit longer and watch our bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> so, yeah. all right yeah. well thank That's you Randy. That conversation that uh if, if what do you if you have ears to hear eyes to see <laughs> go so, ahead and use enjoy them. everybody yeah. enjoy i love these conversations look forward to the next one thank you Roland. all right likewise all right guys take care yeah bye <laughs> bye bye Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Remember You. Uh, guys, Roland here, and I am excited to bring you another conversation today, part of the Remember Who You Are show. This is also the mini series, the third third part of our mini series where we're focused on uh, power versus now and Dr. David Hawkins's map of consciousness. Um, my guest is someone you know very well and you will meet right after the introduction. Power versus force, not power versus now. I said power versus <laughs> now. I got to redo all of that. <laughs> but I like it. I like it. <laughs> power versus now, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to redo all of that. Okay. <laughs> Hello, my friends. Roland here. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Remember Who You Are show. Uh, this is a continuation of a previous conversation I'm having with a guest you are already familiar with, in which we are discussing Dr. David Hawkins's uh, map of consciousness in his book, Power vs. Force. You get to meet him right after this introduction. And throw in that mini series for it. I like this. Oh, you like that? <laughs> <laughs> the, the mini series we did the big series. Okay, yeah. we'll do another intro. I'm down for it. <laughs> <laughs>